The Oklahoma City Thunder and Sam Presti are demonstrating how to build a long-term contender. This all began with the realization, that being that the core that they had centered around Russell Westbrook and Paul George wasn't going to be enough. This is a realization that could have proven worthwhile for a team like Washington with Bradley Beal. People like to say Dame's yeah, bad mean, shot bad ended bad the shot. Thunder's franchise, but in all honesty, I think this is where the next decade plus of Oklahoma City basketball began. While I'll circle back to these major trades and discuss the vast OKC pick stash later on, I want to start off by discussing the current young core in Oklahoma City. Where else to start but with the 25-year-old All-NBA First Team guard Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Many knew Shea would be elite, but I don't think anyone expected him to put himself in the upper echelon of guards, at least not this quickly. Shea also has a unique game. He isn't hoisting threes like there's no tomorrow like most other elite guards. While I'm not a stuck up old head who thinks guys need to stop shooting threes, seeing a methodical game like Shea's is definitely refreshing. Shea has been a solid star level player for a few years now, but he now finds himself in an entirely different conversation. Next up, we have someone who might possibly be the best player on this team in a few years in Chet Holmgren. The number two overall pick last year missed his entire rookie season due to injury. And while experience is the best teacher, I think this year will be a positive on the other side for him. Especially with a frame like his, being extra cautious and not risking anything was definitely the right move. Despite not playing, Chet got to experience the NBA lifestyle and understand the game firsthand. While he still has a ways to go, he also did put on a little bit of weight. While I don't think he'll ever get to the Embiid body type, I think the Thunder should use what the Sixers did with Joel as a general blueprint. But let me actually discuss Chet's game. The 7 foot 1 big man will be instantly one of the most impactful rim protectors in our league. He also has the ability to stretch the floor and I've seen him put the ball on the deck a solid amount in Summer League. While there is obviously a lot of work to be done with Chet, I think as long as the Thunder get it right, which they have so far, Chet and Shea should form a superstar duo. While I would really like to give a few of these guys I'm about to mention their own segments, the Thunder just have way too many young guys for me to do both that and discuss the picks that OKC does still have. Starting off with Josh Giddy, I absolutely love his potential as a secondary ball handler next to Shea, and his height allows for more lineup flexibility. While his three ball still needs work, he showed vast improvement from year one to year two, going from 26.3% to 32.5%. Next up, we have Jalen Williams, or J-Dub as he is called, due to his teammate, Jalen Williams. J-Dub really turned it up at the end of the season. He averaged 14-5-3 and three for the season, but post-All-Star break, he averaged 19-5-4 and four on 43% from deep. I also think he's been in the gym with Lou Dort because recent Instagram pictures make me want to call Howie Roseman and see what we can do about Jalen potentially playing linebacker this season. I really am so jealous of you Thunder fans having four potential stars with three of them being 22 and under. Now I'm just going to run you guys off some names. Lou Dort, Kassam Wallace, Alexei Pokashevsky, Usme Diang, Trey Mann, Usman Garuba, Ty Ty Washington, Jalen Williams, Isaiah Joe, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, and Aaron Wiggins. All of the guys I just named are 25 and younger, and the funniest part is we aren't even to the crazy part yet. As I said, I would like to dive into some of these guys, namely Kassam Wallace, but I'm not making a documentary here. And obviously, you know, I don't think all of these guys will make it to the regular season roster for OKC. I think we've already heard some stuff about Ty Ty Washington potentially getting cut, if I'm not mistaken, but you know, we will see. But regardless, I mean, just the amount of young talent is absolutely insane and really not like anything we've ever really seen before. Now for the cherry on top, the absolutely insane amount of picks that Sam Presti has acquired. While there has been a plethora of moves that contributed to this insane pick stash, one example being the Al Horford deal, I'm only going to dive into the two major trades which jump-started this rebuild. The first trade we are going to look into is the big one, the Paul George trade. While in hindsight this is going to look like one of the most lopsided trades in the history of the game, I want to play devil's advocate for the Clippers for just a second. Knowing what transpired, you'd obviously like to have this move back, but there are a lot of factors that people do not consider when looking at this deal. The first of which being that the Clippers would not have gotten Kawhi Leonard had they not done this deal. The second factor being that Paul George was coming off a season in which he finished top three in both MVP and Defensive Player of the Year voting. It is really unfortunate what has transpired with the Clippers. The main example to me is 2021, where I thought the Clips had a real shot to win it had Kawhi not gone down. Now to get into the actual details of this deal. The Los Angeles Clippers did trade Shea Gildas-Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, a 2021 Miami first, their own pick in 2022, a protected 2023 Miami first, 
pick swaps in 2023 and 2025, along with unprotected firsts in 2024 and 2026 for Paul George. It's funny because at the time of this trade, we all acknowledged it was a haul and that Shea Gilgis Alexander was a solid young piece, but I don't think anyone expected him to become what he has. We all expected the picks to be the most valuable part at the time, and well, with Kawhi and PG's injury issues that have led the Clippers to at least explore a Paul George trade, this crazily enough still could be the case. Kawhi's injuries have already netted the Thunder Jalen Williams in last year's draft. Regardless, this trade will go down as one of the biggest heists in NBA history. Next up, we have the Russell Westbrook trade in which the Oklahoma City Thunder did trade Russell Westbrook for Chris Paul, a 2021 top four protected Houston swap, a 2024 top four protected Houston swap, a 2025 top 20 protected Houston swap, and a 2026 first round pick, which is protected one to four. This move not only gave the Thunder a bunch more future assets, but also brought in a solid replacement in Chris Paul, which allowed for some of the earlier members of this OKC core to get some playoff experience in the bubble. Before we wrap this thing up, I want to do a quick rundown of the Thunder's entire pick stash. 2024, they will have their own first, an unprotected Clippers first, a top four protected Houston first, a Utah first, which I am not exactly sure the protections on, and a second rounder. In 2025, they will have their own pick, the best of the Clippers or Houston picks, a Miami pick, and a Philly pick, which I am not exactly sure of the protections, as well as three second round picks. In 2026, they will have an unprotected Clippers pick, a top four protected Houston pick, and their own first round pick, as well as two seconds. In 2027, they will have a Denver pick, their own pick, and a second. 2028, they will have their own pick in two seconds. 2029, they will have their own pick and four seconds. 2030, they will have their own pick and a second. While in this scenario, the Thunder use all these picks, I think they could still be very good and they will be very good regardless with even their current young core. The thing that should concern you most about this pick stash is the next time that a young superstar asks out. While an all-star level guy would obviously take the Thunder to a next level, I'm more so talking superstar and I really have one in mind. I mean, we'll see how this year goes in Dallas, but I think the obvious candidate for a young superstar to ask out is with Luka Doncic. And with not only the insane amount of picks, but the insane amount of young guys, I think the Thunder should be able to go out and get whoever they want, essentially, you know, whoever's available. Obviously, they, I mean, I mean, hey, potentially maybe they could just go to, you know, one of these teams with a guy that's not even like asking out and be like, listen, we'll give you 10 firsts and Josh Giddy and someone else for your superstar. And like, maybe they could see what happened, but you know, if someone asks out, it will 100% be the Thunder in the mix, I think. You know, one of those top, top, top level guys. Obviously, in the event of a Luka deal, I think Josh Giddy would probably be involved. But if they were to trade for, say, a star forward or big, he could be slotted in that lineup right next to Shea, Giddy, J-Dub, and Chet. I think Sam Presti was fuming at what he let slip through his hands with KD, Russ, and Harden, and this led him to put himself in a position to where he essentially can't fail. Man, I am glad to be a Eastern Conference fan because dealing with not only Oklahoma City, but also the Spurs who have a pick sash, which is pretty crazy that I made a video on the Alcago checkout, as well as teams like Portland and even Memphis. I mean, I know Memphis, you know, is contending right now, but their core is still 23 you know, I mean, John Jaron of 23 and Bane is 25. Made a video on that as well. Go check that out. I also made a video on Portland. Go check that out. But to wrap this up, I want every last one of you Oklahoma City Thunder fans to appreciate Sam Hinkie for laying the groundwork for a rebuild like this. While I know everyone jokes, ha ha, the Sixers process failed, ha ha. Had Sam Hinkie not been exiled by Adam Silver, I think we could be having a very different discussion right now. But anyways, my point being, I feel for the Thunder fans and what they have had to experience these past couple years, but in all honesty, you were in the playoffs really not that long ago, and you have far and away the best future in the NBA. Sam Presti has the next 15 years of NBA basketball in the palm of his hand, and I really don't think he's letting go this time. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all could like the video, sub to the channel, turn on that noti bell, comment any video ideas and your thoughts down below. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm out. Peace.